Today we are going to continue our Advent celebration and uh, our series on Christmas, Christmas Excuses. I've asked for Curtis and Stacy Brandiger to come. Uh, they're going to light the Advent candles for us this morning. And as they're coming, would you turn with me to Luke chapter 2? Luke chapter 2. We're going to begin reading in verse 8. Luke chapter 2 and verse 8. It says, in the same area, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And then an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were very afraid. But the angel said to them, listen, do not fear, for I bring you good news of great joy, which will be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find the baby wrapped in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a company of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace and goodwill toward men. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see what has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came hurrying and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they had seen him, they made widely known the word which was told them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled at what the shepherds told them. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. Father, today I I thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you for this time of year. I pray, God, that you would help us, Lord, as we um, study today, as we look at your word this morning. God, help us, Lord, to hear and to understand what you're speaking to our hearts today. Let Let our minds and our ears be attentive. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning is the second uh, installment of this Christmas Excuses series, and the, the thing of the excuse this time is it's too crowded. It's too crowded. It was a Black Friday. A mob of Walmart shoppers were rushing toward a $29 DVD player, and they trampled a lady by the name of Patricia Van Lester and knocked her unconscious. This was on Friday, November 28, 2003. Her sister, uh, Linda, watched as she got pushed down and walked over like a herd of elephants. And I told them, hey, stop stepping on my sister. She's on the ground. But the crowd kept going. You know, crowds are synonymous with Christmas. Have you noticed? The parking lots are packed. The malls are packed. The Checkout lines wind all the way around forever. Roads are crammed with cars. Airports have a hard time getting you from point A to point B. Even your home has more stuff in it than it probably did just a few weeks ago. The problem with crowds at Christmas is sometimes we tend to trample on Jesus just like the mob of shoppers trampled on Miss Van Lester. And we get so involved with the commotion of the crowd and we get so involved in the commotion of stuff that we miss the announcement. Richard Foster wrote a book and It's entitled The Celebration of Discipline, and in it he said this. He said, in contemporary society, our adversary, the devil, majors in three things, noise, hurry, and crowds. If he can keep us engaged in muchness and manyness, he will rest satisfied. And it seems like there's no time of year where that is evident than this more than at this time of year. We see in the passage of Scripture that after Jesus is born, God sent this birth announcement. I mean, the father was excited. I mean, how many, how many of you, when, when uh, I remember when my kids were born, I, the first thing I did, I was on the phone. I was calling people, hey, guess what happened? I have a son. I have a daughter. It's amazing, right? Make those birth announcements, and some of you went all out, and you got the little announcement cards, and you sent them in the mail, and everybody you knew got one. Because you're excited about it. God makes this birth announcement about his son. 
And I'm amazed to see who received the announcement and who didn't. Who didn't. I want to look at a couple things of this. First of all, I want to look at who didn't receive this birth announcement. The first Christmas, in, in some respects, might have been a little bit like our Christmases today. The town of Bethlehem was booming. We talked about that last week. The town of Bethlehem was booming. People were coming from all over the place. If you were of the house and line of David, if you were in that, that uh, particular lineage, you had to go to your hometown to be taxed. And uh, all of these people are coming to Bethlehem. And, and the streets are probably crowded. And there's people everywhere. And there's animals everywhere. And, and merchants are probably, just like on a Black Friday, they're probably waking up early to get ready for all the, all the hustle and bustle. Because all of these visitors are going to need stuff, right? Probably the innkeeper is getting up a little early because he's got a house full of people and, and he's got to make preparations. He's got to make sure everything is just so-so. People are everywhere. There's a crowd everywhere. Have you ever noticed that in crowds of people, the noise level is heightened? You ever been in a, in a, in a crowd? One of the things that uh, I've, I enjoy doing, especially as a youth pastor, I love going to youth convention. When you get over 1,000 plus, sometimes even 2,000 teenagers in a room, that volume level begins to climb. And then they start pumping the music on top of it. And, and you're finding yourself yelling at the person next to you to have a conversation. You ever been in one of those kind of crowds before? Where it's like, hey, how are you? And, and, and they're yelling back at you, and then all of a sudden everything stops. You ever been like that, and you're just stuck yelling? <laughs> That's one of these kind of deals. It's, 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 a, it's a loud thing, and, and the crowds and the, and the noise of the people drown out the cry of a baby that's born in a manger. A place that was reserved for animals is now the bed. And God, the proud Father of Jesus, now sent out a birth announcement like none other. What a cool thing that would have been to be a shepherd and to see that. Because God had never before taken on human flesh and this awe-inspiring, amazing God is now in human flesh right there in front of us. This child is going to change the world. It's amazing, though, that the citizens of Bethlehem and the people in the town didn't hear the announcement. The mayor of Bethlehem, he never got that, that call. The high priest in Jerusalem should have known. We talked about that even last week. He should have known what was going on. He should have seen all the signs and, and the things happening, and, and he never got that announcement. Caesar Augustus never got that. His royal court never got that. None of the officials received that. The palace didn't hear. The temple didn't hear. Jerusalem didn't hear. Bethlehem didn't hear. Why is that? I think it, it calls into God's plan. We're going to talk about that here in just a minute. But I wonder sometimes if we too miss what's right in front of us, what's right there with us, because we're too focused on the noise and the busyness around us and the crowds around us. So who did receive that message? God's birth announcement came to the most unassuming group of people in the outskirts of Bethlehem that you could probably imagine. Luke's account says this, there were shepherds that were living, the same area there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And then the angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were very afraid. Wouldn't you be kind of a little bit afraid too? God's making this birth announcement and He uses angels and He uses His glory and it lights up the night sky and it's just, oh my goodness, it's amazing. And then all of a sudden you're just like, what in the world is going on? These shepherds had never seen anything like this before. But the angel said to them, listen, don't, do not fear for I bring you good news of great joy which will be all people for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You'll find the baby wrapped in strips of cloth and lying 
in a manger. The announcement of Christ's birth came to shepherds. It came to sheep herders. Sheep herders. If we were to compare that group of shepherds to present day people, it would be the same kind of social class as a homeless person would be today. These were people who lived out. They were living out in the fields. They didn't just go out there whenever it was kind of convenient for them. They lived in the fields. They lived with the sheep. Shepherds would have been the last people that probably you and I would have called on to to make this amazing announcement, but yet God uses them as the first ones to receive this news. And I got to thinking about that. Why? Why would he call on these folks? Well, there's a few reasons, and I want to share them with you this morning that I feel like the Holy Spirit imparted to me in this message. It says this, the first one is this, the shepherds were borderline social outcasts. They were borderline social outcasts. They did not fit with culture. They traveled. They moved. They didn't have much of a home life. They were always with the sheep. They didn't look good. And if you've been around sheep, you know they didn't smell good. Their language was probably crude and harsh. They were uneducated. They were unsophisticated. You know, those folks that aren't up on the latest trends. They don't have the newest gadget or the latest toy. They didn't have a personal web page or a Facebook page. They didn't have a laptop. They didn't have an email address. They didn't have a cell phone. But God's saying this, no matter who you are in society, I want you to know I am accessible to anybody. I am accessible to any body. It doesn't matter your dirt. It doesn't matter your past. It doesn't matter your current condition. It doesn't matter your mess. It doesn't matter your smell. It doesn't matter physical appearance, emotional hurt and baggage. It doesn't matter where you are or who you are. God says, I am available to everyone. That's the message of the shepherd. I'm accessible and I don't want anybody to live without me. The second thing that I notice in this passage is this. These shepherds were somebody that would have been religiously unclean. They would have been religiously unclean. Um, Jewish tradition says that to fully participate in their religion, one has to undergo certain rituals and attend festivals and services to be considered clean, to be considered acceptable to God. It's been known that uh, one of the, the things about shepherds is this. They, somebody had to be watching the sheep while the festivals were going on. Somebody had to be there with them. And so oftentimes, because of where they were on the social ladder, a lot of shepherds would miss out on those festivals. A lot of shepherds would miss out on those ceremonial times of, being, of cleanliness. And so they would be rendered as unclean for that particular in the Jewish culture. They would go when they went to the Temple Mount, and they did get a chance to do that, though. They were often overlooked. They were often uh, just had somebody not, they would just kind of push them aside. Maybe you know that look very well. Maybe that look that says, you don't belong here. Maybe that look that says, hey, uh, what are you doing here in this establishment? Maybe that look that says, oh man, if you just clean yourself up, then you can come. And they were led to believe that they weren't good enough for God. Which I believe is one of the reasons that God gave them this great announcement. To show that He came for all people. Rich, poor, Jew, Gentile, dirty or clean. He came for everybody. The message of Christmas is found, my, in, as I look at this passage, the message of Christmas is found in verse 10. It says, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people. Good news. If you take the word gospel, and you define the word gospel, the gospel defined means that, good news. 
The gospel is good news. I bring you good news. I bring you the gospel message that unto you this day in the city of Bethlehem, a Savior has been born to you. That's the good news that will bring you, if you'll accept that good news, it will bring you great joy. And not only will you have great joy, but it's for every body. That's the message of Christmas. That's the message of a Savior who deserved to be born in the palace, but was born in a manger. That's the, sa- the message of a Savior that says, I am accessible to anyone and everyone. I want you to know it doesn't matter what you've been through or where you've come from. It doesn't matter the things that are going on in your life. God is accessible to you. And if you will receive that good news, you will then have great joy. That will be in your heart. That's the message of Christmas. That's the whole reason why we celebrate. That's the whole reason why we get together. Sometimes I think we can get so enamored with the crowds and so enamored with the stuff and so enamored with the things that are going on and all the lights and all the decorations and all the stuff that Christmas brings because if you've got a family like mine, you, you understand that, man, we've got cookies to make and we've got parties to go to and we've got things that are on our agenda. And, and when you go into a place to go shopping, which we try to only do once we try to go one time because I just can't take it more than once and so my wife and I will spend an entire day one time she knows she has me for a limited time on one day because after that's over I am done I'm done why because I get tired I get these crowds make you weary Going from point A to point B and somebody ripping a shirt out of your hand to save a buck, it gets all, oh, you can have it. It gets wearisome. And sometimes we get so caught up in that that we miss what Christmas is really all about. That in the midst of all the noise and in the midst of the crowds, God says, listen, I bring you good news that will cause great joy. That will be for all people. Third thing I notice about these shepherds is is this. The shepherds, they were kind of loners. They were tending sheep out in the field. Sheep. English is hard. I'll be all right. They were under the stars. They were away from the city streets and the city lights. It was a a life of solitude. It's like the cowboy on the open western range singing home on the range where the deer and animal play. Seldom is heard a discouraging word and the skies are not cloudy all day, those kind of things. It's a simple life. It's less hectic. It's slow. It's probably, well, slower, I'll say, unless the sheep get a little crazy, which sometimes sheep get a little crazy. It's no wonder that Jesus calls us sheep, amen, because sometimes we get a little crazy. but they prefer a life of quietness and solitude separated from people. It's interesting that these people, uh, to these people, the angel spoke regarding the birth of Jesus. God made this announcement to these folks, people who were not really socially, can I say, they were a little social awkward. They weren't really the the mainstream kind of people that had this kind of uh, people who didn't really have the standards of the social elite, and they really didn't even like crowds. They didn't even want to be around people, really. And God makes this announcement, and it comes to those who are not in the crowded city, but He comes to those who are separated. They could hear because they were in a place to hear. I wonder sometimes if we have a hard time hearing the voice of God because we don't put ourselves in a place to hear it. I wonder sometimes if we get so enamored with the crowds that we don't put ourselves in a place where we can actually hear what God is trying to speak to us. So 
So how do we hear the God's message? I want to give us some pointers on that. How do we hear God's message? Because I got to be honest, church, it's a must that we do. It's a must that we hear God's message. Do, do we need to travel to Israel and become sheep herders to hear God's message? No. Do we need to go to Montana and not bathe ever again? No. So what do we need to do? How do we prevent crowds from tramping out Christ in this Christmas? A couple things I want to share. Number one is this. The first one is be still. Be still. As I said earlier, it's so possible to get wrapped up in all the activities, all the stuff that Christmas brings, seeing family and all the dynamic of family that, uh, you know, like I said a few weeks ago, everybody's got a crazy person. And uh, if you raise, didn't raise your hand, you're probably that crazy person. It's probably you. Everybody's got one, and sometimes whenever we all get together, that makes it a fun, fun time, doesn't it? Bless God. And we have all that. It's, it's, pro, it's said, I believe, that anxiety happens more and stress happens more at Christmas time than any other time of the year because of all the stuff and all the crowdedness. Because not only are we facing crowds of people, you're facing crowds in your schedules. Right? Oh man, I got this party to go to. I've got this event that's happening. The seniors are having this thing. I want to go to that. I've got this thing I've got to go to. I've got the Christmas play that's happening next Sunday night. And all of a sudden, our schedules get a little bit more, and a little bit more, and a little bit more. And and to be honest, when October was here, your schedule was jam-packed anyway. And now you're trying to fit more crowd, more into that little tiny agenda that you have. And that's stressing you out. And you've got all these things that are going on in your life. And we become so busy that sometimes we completely miss Christmas. I got to be completely honest with you. There have been times in my life when that's happened. There have been times in my life, and you may think, well, pastor, don't, I mean, you're, you're giving Christmas messages, you know, and this is, uh, you know, I was, I was talking with the staff, I said, sometimes it was, you know, when I first approached this in November, and I start thinking about Christmas messages, I think, what in the world, how am I going to repackage this again, because this is the 13th time I've given you a Christmas message, 13th year, how am I going to repackage this again? And sometimes when you think about all that stuff and you think about doing all that and you think, man, you've been preaching Christmas messages. How in the world can you say that sometimes Christmas just flies by and you don't even catch a glimpse of what it is about? And I think part of that is because I'm just like, you know, why did I have my schedule set like that? Why did I not have time when I could just sit and be still and say, God, Oh, come, I want to come adore you, Christ the Lord. So how do we do that? How how do we make sure that that doesn't happen? Well, I'd like to tell you the answer sounds simple, but it's going to take a little effort on your part. It's to sit and be still, to ponder on the Lord, to wait on the Lord and behold Him. There's going to be enough time for running. There's going to be enough time for activity. There's going to be enough time to do all that stuff. But you're going to have to choose, deliberately choose, to stop and to come back and be still. Psalm 46 says this. It says, be still and know that I am God. Refrain from an overload of activity so that you can see Christ. Second thing that we need to do is find a quiet place. Find a quiet place. Have you ever noticed that Christmas comes packaged with a lot of noise? A lot of noise. Um, I, I remember my wife and I were sitting down at the table yesterday, and she's pulling out Christmas cards and stuff that we'd received from the past because we didn't go through those at the end of last year. We were just kind of like, okay, this Christmas has to go right? Um, Maybe you're like that or not. You're looking at me like, what are you thinking? That's not true. That's the way we were. We we used to put up a little three-foot tree and put it in the box, put everything else in the box, and put it in storage. 
Um, and so we didn't go through the Christmas cards, and we're sitting there, and I'm, I'm writing out, I forget what I was even writing out, I was doing something for this year's um, list or something like that that we were making, and all of a sudden she opens up a card. And you ever seen those musical cards? I wish they had a volume knob. She turns on this card. She opens up this card, and all of a sudden this card just belts out. I mean loud, right there in front of me. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you. I'm like, wow, that is loud. You go to certain places, and man, it's just like, blaring loud and and things that uh the the stores are loud and and the people around you can be loud even our christmas celebrations with our family we used to have a lot bigger ones than we do now and and i remember going to uh either my house uh, or my grandparents house and there was a lot of people there or, or we'd go to crystal's family's house and there'd be a lot of people there and if you wanted to talk to somebody you almost had to pull them and go outside to talk to them because there was just so much noise and so kids are screaming, I got the gift I wanted. You know, and, and how many know the gift they wanted is on a decibel level that is higher than the kid? It's so loud and it's so noisy sometimes. And how do we get a, away from that? How do we get to a quiet place? It says the shepherds were out in the fields. They were in a place away from the city, away from the crowds where they could hear. Sometimes that place of quiet isn't always a physical place. Sometimes in the middle of what would be chaos around us, we often need to get ourselves and ourselves quiet. It can be a place of the heart and just become quiet. Kind of like the eye of the hurricane. Storms may be going all around you, but there's a time in the middle where you have peace. That intentional calmness. I know it wasn't sung out in the fields with the shepherds that Christmas night, but there was a a Christmas carol that would fit that very well. Silent night. Holy night. All is calm. And yet all is bright. Round yon virgin, mother and child, holy infant, so tender and mild, sleep in heavenly peace. Sleep in heavenly peace. Make the time, make the place, enjoy a time of quietness and silence with the Lord. Move away from the crowds and listen to the still, small, small, silent voice of God. Find a place to be silent. Finally, is to be intentional. As you're reading this, there's a word that stuck out to me. And, you know, it's probably not a word that you would come across a lot, and you probably read past it a lot, and that's okay. But the word is found in verse 8, and it says this, that there were shepherds living, living in the fields. Um, the thing I, I noticed that is, is you know, I'm sure Luke meant that they were more than just eating and breathing and performing their job. Maybe it could mean more than that. Maybe it's something that they were intentional about how they were living their life. They weren't just waiting for a paycheck. They were living out in the fields. They weren't bombarded with all the things of life. But they were living. I wonder if people could say the same thing about us. Are we truly living? What do you mean by that? Well, I'm afraid that a lot of us are guilty of pretending. Guilty of pretending. Let's face it. There might be a lot of even pretending happen here today. Earlier I told you that story of of the person in Walmart who on Black Friday got trampled. As Paul Harvey would say, now... Let me finish the rest of that story. See, the story also has a dark side to it. It turns out that that lady, Patricia Van Lester, was a former Walmart worker who had filed 16 injury claims against her former employer and other businesses that she worked for. There was an investigation by CBS Television uh, from Orlando, Florida, that revealed that she had received thousands of dollars in settlements 
and workers' compensations since 1987. That was 16 years. Could it be that maybe this lady could have been a fake? Could have been pretending to be hurt? Before we pass judgment, before we go on with that, I, I want us to ask ourselves this question. Could it be that maybe we are pretending to be living when in fact we're not really, we're dead? We're pretending to be a Christian, but I'm living however I want. Pretending that I've got everything all together, but on the inside, my life and my mind and everything is just in turmoil. Pretending. We put on masks, we put on faces that say, hey, everything is going great. I, I know what to say. I know how to act. I know what the, the protocol is for being a Christian. I know the prayers to pray. I know the stuff to say. And we put on this face, but inside we're not really living. We're pretending. And I wonder, because eventually when you're just pretending, What's inside, the Bible says, will come out. Whatever's in your heart will eventually manifest itself in you. And you think you got it all together. I mean, I've been pretending this way for a long time. You know, I remember when I was a kid, I used to pretend like I had this relationship with Jesus. I knew all the stories. I knew all the stuff. When um, people came up to me and asked me about questions about the Bible, man, I could tell them things about the Bible. I could, man, I could give stories, and that was awesome. But I didn't know Jesus. I was just pretending. It wasn't until a day when I had a connection completely with him, and I let down those guards that I fully became to know what it meant to be living. And not pretending. I knew what it meant to have relationship with God. Question today, will you hear the message of God this Christmas? And really every day for that matter. Will you stop long enough and be still to listen for God? Will you find a place of solitude? A place where God can break through the clamor and the busyness and the hectic schedule? We determine to live your life intentionally. We stop pretending, stop going through motions, and live the life that God's called you to do. Don't allow Jesus to be crowded out this season. He gives us good news of great joy. That's for all the people. Would you bow your heads, please? Father, today, I pray right now, Lord, that God, that there would be a move of the Holy Spirit into our hearts right now. Father, move throughout this room in Jesus' name. You're here this morning, and, and you've known all the right things to say. You've known all the right stuff to do. But if you were to look inside your heart, you would see that there's no real life there. You've just become good at pretending. You've come, become good at pretending. that You've got this Christian life. What it looks like on the outside, you feel like you've got that down pat, but the problem is on the inside, you're rotting away. today the Holy Spirit's dealing with you because you've got so many people feel fooled. We don't know how the inside looks. Your family, your friends, the people around you, they only know what you, the persona that you're putting up, the mask that you're hiding behind. But today you want to get honest with yourself and God and you say, God, I acknowledge to you, Lord, today that I've been hiding behind this mask. I've been pretending. But today I hear the message of the Lord that says, I want good news of great joy. And to be honest, my joy has not been that great. 
I'm finding it hard to, uh, to get up in the morning. I'm finding it hard to, to live past my, my, my state of mind. I'm finding it hard this Christmas season to even try to get my mind and my attention to focus on a Savior. Today, you say, you know what, Pastor? I want to take the mask off and stop pretending. And I want to know what it is to have life. I want to know what it is to be living. I want to know what that great joy that the angels spoke about to those shepherds is all about. If that's you this morning, would you just slip up your hand? Pastor, that's me. Pastor, that's me. Praise God. This morning, here's what I'd like for us to do as we close out this service. I'm going to have Pastor Dustin just playing quietly like he is right now. We're not going to sing until we get ready to close. But I want you to take the next couple of minutes. There's no crowd noise. There's no place to be. There's no things that you have to do. And I want you to take the next few moments and I want you to be still before the Lord and I want you to just praise him I want you to come and adore him Christ the Lord right where you sit would you verbally just begin to praise him this morning oh come let us adore him hallelujah Jesus, we come before you today. We come before you today. Set our hearts on you, Lord. Set our lives on you, God. We step away from all the noise and all the activity and all the crowds. And in this moment, God, if we just take time to worship, to do what the shepherds did that night and to come before you and to worship, to seek you out, God, so that we can worship. God, we want to be intentional this week. We come with, to you today, all things off, all masks off, and we come before you today, open, honest, thanking you for great joy that you've given us because we've received the good news that a Savior has been born to us. And that Savior came and He gave His life so that we could live. And He rose again to give us victory. Hallelujah. And today it's in that that we thank you, God. And we give you glory today. I pray, as was mentioned earlier, help us to be bold in, our, in shining the light of you this week. I pray, God, that we would keep the focus of Christmas where it needs to be, not on the crowds, not on the schedules, not on our time, but, God, on you. We thank you and we praise you, God, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen.